In this video, we're going to explore how we can center the radial gradient colors. So right now we have this one here from the previous video. And of course, this is a very unsatisfying view because it has nothing to do basically with a radial. So what I want to do here now is to really create one because right now it just doesn't look good. So what are we going to do here? Well, first of all, we have all the codes here. But what I want to do now is I want to change that. And instead of this fill style here, let's move this away or at least create a new one which is just a circle so i'm going to just say ctx dot fill style we do again gradient but then here i'm going to say here well we can do it here above ctx dot uh, begin had we're going to draw an arc i'm going to say ctx dot um, we can make a line here so we say here, stroke style and this stroke style will be, of course, here. What do we say here? Let's say color white. And we say CTX that line width to make the line. And the line width will be, let's say, 10 pixels. And I realize this, of course, the white needs to be in quotation because it's a string value. So once we did this, what I want to do here is CTX dot arc. And this arc, well, let's position it, let's say, 200 by 200. That's the starting point. The X and Y. And then what I want to do here is we have a radius of 200. And then what I want to do here is an angle. And then just create a quick angle here. And I'm going to comment this one out, by the way. To create an angle here, because remember the angle, it's basically the pi, the math.pi. So I'm going to say your constant angle equals math.pi divide by 180 degrees. Why? Because 1 pi equals 50% of a circle. So we have this here, now we have the angle. I'm going to say this angle multiplied by zero, because the starting point is a, we want to make a full circle. Starting point is zero, and then the ending point will be 360, which is basically at the same point, but then in a full circle shape. Finally, we're going to put it for counterclockwise, you say false. Save that, we have this one here now. Once we did this, I'm going to say ctx dot fill, ctx dot uh, stroke, and then what we're going to do here is ctx dot close hat. Save that. Refresh. All right. So now we have this circle here, and this is basically our target. And we might maybe want to move that, but that's all right for now. It doesn't matter too much. If I do this five pixels, maybe it will be even better. And yeah, maybe we can move this with, with two pixels or five pixels here. But that's all right. That's not really the focus. The focus is I want to color inside here. So now we have this here. And remember, we had this as well. So we might be confused. Okay, how do we calculate this? So to repeat, this is basically the X. So let me just put it down here. I'm going to copy all of this. And I'm going to repeat this again. And then we're going to break it down nicely. And then you will see how this truly works. And then you have this nicely in the center. So we say here, this is the X value. This is the Y value. And then we have here the radius 0. And here eventually would be the width and height. The width and height, and then finally here the radius 1. What this really means is basically this is the radius starting point of the gradient color, and this one would be the ending point. So we have here 0 and that amount here, and we create something like this. And of course these angles here look quite weird. So what we need to do now is just to understand what do we have here. Because basically this information here is crucial for us and what I want to do here is just start at the very basics so we have here the x and y position which will be 200 by 200 let's put it in there and this here we say our starting point of the radius is in the very center remember it will calculate based on an arc because the radial gradient is basically built on the circle itself so we're going to start here in the center if we say here 0, it would indicate at the center. If we would say here, let's say, 50 pixels, it would be in the center, plus 50 pixels, and then from that outer circle, it will start working on. I'm going to show you later on. So once we did this, the next thing that we want to do is, all right, so we have this position here, which is there, and then what we want to do is, of course, figuring out what is really the angle of our item. In this case, well, we have this uh, item here this is the radius and I guess this is 200 here um, 
Should that be 200? I guess if you want to have a circle with a radius, let's make this. Uh, I guess 100 it would be fine. We'll refresh this. There we are. We get something now. All right. But this is 100. This is a radius of 100. That would indicate 100 here and 100 here. So that would mean 200 by default. So we say here, this, this is 200. All right. Then here should be as well. The width and height should be also 200. If I save this, refresh. Now we are getting something here you can see here now you're nicely in the center of course it's still not 100 uh, percent accurate so what we want to do now is just to adjust that a little bit so how do we adjust this we have this 200 here we can probably reduce this to 100 let's do this then we get the full one why 100 so let me explain here remember this is the starting of the radius and it is the end of it we had a radius of 200 or our radius would be 100 but if you have from left to right, it will equal to 200. That would be basically the width. So we must say here 100. If we do 200, it would just double or multiply the items here times 2. And then that's why you get this here. So let's put this back here. So if I do this here now, let's say uh, we make this 200. Save that. Then this here will be 200 as well. Save, refresh. There we are. So now we get this nice, I guess, uh, target that looks like a target. And you can see here, this is 25%. If you look very carefully, 25% and then 25%, 25% and eventually blue. So this is one of the ways how you can control that. But what happened if we, for example, say, instead of starting at the very center, I want to start 25 pixels. So if I save that, refresh, what is happening with 25 pixels? Basically, it creates here a, a, a starting point of the gradient and we can really see this if you're going to remove here for example this item let's comment this out save that you'll see here it starts see this stays all right and then after it starts to gradually change and we can see it also very nice if we will create a new circle so let me create a new circle here and i want to put it in the center so if I refresh here all right i want to put something in the center here nicely and this will be our black circle and then here the position will be 200 by 200 and in this circle here we have this radius and uh, if this is 25 pixels in radius I'm going to say here 25 pixels of radius as well and then here once I do this and if I save that and refresh you can see here now this is really the center and you can see they are nicely matched with them so if I say stroke width and then the gradient well let's convert this gradient into a black as well save that there we are. So now we have played around with and we can just really pinpoint this. So what we could do more is, for example, we can create, because the effect here is based on this here, 25%. 25% of, of a item, and then here it says when will we start at how many pixels of the radius. In this case, it's 25 pixels. So from here, 25 pixels, and then it starts to change gradually. We can change this by moving this left and right. For example, I want to move this more to the right side, this circle. To do that, I can say here, for example, here, move this 25 pixels to the right. And then what happens is we create a different shape. Now it looks like a very, uh, well, very similar, but you can see it's being moved. This creates almost like an illusion as well. So what we could do is to put this in the center, we need to push this circle again in the center here by moving it again 25 pixels to the right. If I save that, there we are. Now we are back here in the center, or slightly center, you can see here, it looks like this part is slightly more less or uh, smaller compared to this part here. It creates a certain, I guess, a 3D effect or illusion here. Anyway, most important part here is to understand these kind of things. What we could do as well is convert this. Let's say we do this 200. We put here 0. If we save this, refresh, and what really happens now is we're inverting it. And meaning, now the blue starts at the beginning, and then the red is the outer. It's exactly the opposite. So basically what we did here, but we say, well, we start with blue and then we go to green, etc., etc., because the center is blue. And with this, you can play around with these gradial effects in the canvas.